Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and today we have a different type of video than you might be used to. Today I'm starting officially the Why This Mech Is Awesome for the Lancer players. I know a lot of you might not be super interested in Lancer, but there are people out there who really like this content and I want to be able to provide it to them. Speaking of, if you are actually really interested in Lancer or getting into Lancer, please direct people to this channel so that they can get the information they need for getting the game started. I'm going to be doing my best to keep information coming out, though of course Pathfinder 2E is still the main say on the channel. Regardless, I still want to pump out Lancer content whenever I can. So today we're going to be talking about a frame. Now typically as I do this series, I'm going to be doing the whole license so that I can talk about different aspects of the license that apply to the frame that is in that license. But these first few videos are actually going to be on individual mech frames, specifically the starting ones you get from GMS. And that's right. Today we're going to be talking about Old Faithful, the Everest. This is the starting mech that all Lancers get when they start the game. And something that people tend to forget you have access to the Everest at all times, even after you get your other mech frames. So at any time, you can boot up your good old faithful Everest and kit it out with some of the things you picked up from your other licenses that you've gotten as you've upgraded. So let's talk about what the Everest does and why it's actually kind of good. So when we talk about the Everest, we're looking at essentially the stock standard, like basic mech. Its stats are a little bit higher, I would say, in in consideration to other mechs, but that's because its frame traits are not the biggest part of it. And as we go through the series, the, you're going to see that the frame traits or some other features of the mech might take their overall frame attributes down. So when we're looking at the attributes of the Everest, we're looking at essentially a very balanced and standard amount so that all mechs moving forward, we can see the differences between them and the Everest. It's going to be a good middle ground for a lot of the mechs so that we can see maybe where some of those points are going. So if we take a look at the attributes overall, it starts with zero armor, which is pretty standard for most mechs, so that's not surprising. It has 10 HP, which actually makes it a little bit higher than most mechs in the game. Though, if we are considering that this is the standard, that means that mechs are oftentimes giving up HP in exchange for other benefits. So 10 is considered good in Lancer and is something that you should consider when you're looking at future frames. Now, they have an evasion and e-defense of 8, which is pretty standard and I think very understandable as far as the game is concerned. This means that you have a slightly better than 50% chance of being hit on any particular roll, but you can obviously increase this with things like your character's agility or whatever other mech skills you have that can boost your stats. So 8 is going to be considered the standard in the game if a mech has more or less. We know it kind of has deviated for some reason or another. Next up is heat capacity. It is six, which I think is honestly not bad. Honestly, I'm surprised it's not a little bit higher, but six is honestly not terrible and a good marker or benchmark, I guess, for looking at future frames. A sensor range of 10. This one is one of the most varied stats amongst mechs because mechs can have like a five sensors to a 20. So 10 does feel like it's right in the middle. And honestly, it makes the Everest really good for using a wide variety of systems that target enemy mechs. They have a tech attack bonus of plus zero, so they're not necessarily orientated towards tech attacking, but honestly, not a lot of mechs even have any bonuses to tech attack. You can still tech attack using the Everest without too much problem. Granted, if it's your main thing, you might want to pick a frame that has more tech attack bonus. Next is the repair capacity, which is five. Pretty standard, and it allows for decent repairs in a fight or even between rests. Though there is something about this particular trait that we'll mention with one of their later traits, so keep the repair capacity in mind. 
Save target is 10. That's pretty standard, but a lot of mechs do sacrifice some of their save target for some of their features. So the Everest is actually really good at using systems or abilities that force saves on enemies. In fact, it's because it's kind of, I think, a little bit above average that it just makes the Everest a really good all rounder. It doesn't matter how you approach fighting game or an enemy in the game. It's just going you're going to have some modicum of success, which I think is really good. Now, the Everest speed is four, which I'm actually surprised considering some of its traits. But this can be considered like the standard four is a standard speed for a mech. Anything higher or lower is above or below average, respectively speaking. And then six system points. This is, I think, a little bit higher. I think the average is closer to five amongst mech frames in the game. So six is a little bit higher and it allows you to be very customizable with the Everest, which is kind of the point. This is the first mech that you get in the game, after all. And so being able to kit it out the way you want, I think, is one of the Everest actual strong suits. The Everest is just going to be good in any mission, no matter what, because it's kind of just meant to be balanced. Your individual licenses that will give you additional systems or weapons will really fit well on the Everest. So it's just something to keep in mind that anytime you're going into a scenario where maybe the mech that you've been kitting out doesn't work out, consider going back to the Everest because it just kind of works in most scenarios. All right, so we're looking at the frame traits next and they're both really, really good. So frame trait wise, they have initiative, which is very unique. It's the only mech I think maybe, I haven't checked the other starter mechs yet. So I don't know if any of the other ones do, but I think the Everest is the only one that has initiative. And initiative allows you to once per scene, the Everest may take any quick action as a free action. This just allows you to do something else in a scene. And it doesn't use a core point or anything like that. So it's actually really good. Granted, for a trait that is kind of like a passive ability of your mech, having it a once in a scene kind of effect does feel kind of bad. But you never know when you just need to do something. And it says you may take any quick action as a free action. I'm prone to assume that means that you can take a quick action that you've already taken before. This is really good and potentially really, really powerful in the game. And I feel if you use this particular trait very well, you can get a lot of benefit using the Everest. The next trait is replaceable parts. I think the other ones might share this one as well, but replaceable parts is actually really good because what it does is when you're resting, so not in combat, whenever you repair your Everest, you can do so at one structure per one repair rather than two repairs per structure on your mech. That means that you can go really gung-ho with your Everest as long as you make it through the battle. So this actually gives you a little bit of wiggle room and allows you to play a little bit more carelessly when it comes to submissions or if you have submissions that you don't really know the danger of the parameters. This is a really good mech for trying out a scenario or a, a scene in general because you can go out you can do what you need to do, scout out an area, what have you. And then if anything happens, if you take structure damage, you're really easy to repair. I also like this because what it means is that the Everest is such a standard stock style of mech that its parts are just so easy to find that repairing the mech is really, really easy. So those are its traits. And looking at its weapon mounts it as a main, a flex and a heavy mount. This is the this is really good in all, all things considered now it would be better obviously if it's two flexes and a heavy mount as flexes can be two auxiliary or a main while a main mount is either a main or a flex mount but what this particular set of mounts allows you to do is since you have a heavy mount you can actually use a super heavy mount if you really wanted to using a, a heavy with a main mount plus two auxiliary mounts for your flex mount is a very powerful and very good setup if that's the way you want to go. Or you can go with a really solid main weapon, a good heavy weapon, and two auxiliary weapons that give you a full range of power. Maybe you have a main melee weapon that's really, really powerful and a cannon to go with it. And then for anything at that mid range, you have your auxiliary weapons. Overall, this is a very good and very standard kind of mount setup 
but it works really well for the Everest as it kind of just allows you to do any kind of play style. Now let's talk about the core system of the Everest and it's actually really good. It's called a hyperspec fuel injector and what it does is when you activate it for the rest of the scene, you get a plus one accuracy on all attacks, checks, and saves. And additionally, once per turn, you can boost as a free action. This allows you to kind of just go sicko mode and just destroy an enemy. And if the mission is just a one battle encounter, which is honestly not that uncommon, if you go by the adventure books that they've already come out for, this is actually a really good thing because it just makes the Everest nuts. That plus one accuracy on all attacks is really good. And since it says attacks, I have to assume it means tech attacks as well. So you can just do whatever. And if it's a one one fight mission, you're just an amped up mech for that whole mission and less the rest of the scene. This one core power is genuinely super good. And it makes the Everest a legitimately good mech to use especially because it can adapt to any situation and you can get it out for any situation. Is it going to do as well at any one job as any other mech? No, it, of course not. That's not the point of the Everest. The point of the Everest is you can build it how you want. You can make it do really well at whatever you want it to do. And it can be just a step under the front runners in that category. Overall, the Everest is a good standard stock mech for a reason. It's something that me that Lancer pilots can rely on in a lot of situations, and there's just so many ways you can utilize the Everest. Now, normally at this point, I'll give some tips or tricks for an individual mech or a license that can help you out when you're deciding to, you know, what you need to do. For the Everest, though, it's just so open that I really have nothing to say. It is the balance style mech. I guess one thing I would say is that unless you're getting core bonuses that can give it the ability to give cover or talents, maybe playing a tank style or defender style mech is not the ever strong suit, but it's good at pretty much everything else. So pick out good weapons, make good use of your weapon mounts, and honestly, use your hyperspec fuel injector whenever you know that this is the last fight. The second you know that you're done or it's the only fight, just use it. And even, you know what? Actually, a really good thing about it is even if you don't know it's the final mission, it just means that for one of the fights you're doing, you're going to be super juiced up and get a lot of benefit out of it. And if you're, if you're out of core points for another fight, it's really not that big a deal because it's not like a super game-changing necessarily core system. But at the same time, you become very good when you activate it. So, you know, don't be too stingy with this particular core power. And there's a lot of ways that you can even get core powers back depending on some situations. So, you know, don't be too stingy. I think that this particular mech here is just designed to go full throttle as soon as you know that the fighting is getting real. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. I kind of already did my pitch earlier, so... You know, I don't need to do any other calls of action, but if you like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments if you want to, if you like this series, if you like the layout, or maybe any critiques or criticisms so I can make this series better for you Lancer players who are looking for information about how to play the game. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.